Gloria had no doubt that she and Duke were meant to get married. From the first day he appeared in their swimming section, where she had been practicing for several years since school, she was captivated by him. Gloria's appearance couldn't be described as model like a prominent nose, freckles all over her face, narrow Asian-like eyes, and a heavy chin inherited from her father. Her relationship with her parents was also strained. Gloria's daughter's impulsiveness and vindictiveness were painful for both her father and mother. Her older sister, Audrey, was very attractive with an elegant, beautiful nose that had been the subject of Gloria's envy since childhood. Audrey would spend hours studying her reflection in the mirror, just to affirm what their mother told her every day. Gloria will have to choose a guy who isn't too demanding. Maybe Gloria isn't as it is attractive, but she is very domestic. And that was indeed the case. The younger daughter had always been a skilled homemaker, learning to cook and sew early on, keeping the house clean. When boys at school began mocking Gloria's figure, she took up swimming, and by the age of 17 she had the classic swimmer's physique broad shoulders, narrow hips, and a slim waist she always accentuated, along with well-toned legs, which she proudly displayed in short skirts and shorts. The first encounter with Duke happened when the coach asked him to find an empty locker for personal belongings, and Gloria happened to be near an empty one. Confidently, she approached the attractive stranger and introduced herself, Hi, I'm Gloria. If you need a locker, I can show you. The guy followed her. He was a head taller, which she liked. Gloria was self-conscious about her size and dreamt of a partner who would make her feel small and delicate. This newcomer seemed to fit the bill. He had light blue, almost transparent eyes, a slender nose, and a friendly smile on a round face. His white hair was cut short, and through the open collar of his shirt, a small silver cross necklace was visible. However, she didn't like his hands at all. His nails were very short, and there was noticeable dirt around the cuticles. Does he even know that there's soap to wash hands, Gloria muttered to herself. As if overhearing her thoughts, the guy unexpectedly responded, I was working on my car engine recently. My hands got so dirty that no soap could clean them. It's embarrassing to show them to people. Gloria blushed and replied nonchalantly, no worries, it'll come off. They add something to the water in our pool. You'll be all white and clean, just wait. The guy introduced himself as Duke. They exchanged numbers and started calling each other. Gloria called more often, but her new acquaintance didn't mind. Duke had recently returned from the army, and before his service he hadn't interacted much with girls. He wasn't particularly fond of talking about himself, so Gloria knew that he had a passion for cars. He owned a small auto repair shop outside the city, and was pursuing a part-time economics degree. Gloria confided in him about the recent conflicts arising between her parents. You know, I don't even want to go home because of this. It's so frustrating. You come home and they're ready to tear each other apart, creating such a ruckus. Why is it that in other families it's all peace and quiet, but mine has to argue all the time? Gloria's father didn't drink, and neither did her mother. The source of their disputes lay in their similar approaches to parenting if something displeased them, it was better to remain silent. However, this contradicted the reality, as both would keep silent harbor resentment and eventually, the accumulated grievances would erupt into a massive argument. Gloria had already adopted this behavior, remaining quiet until she felt she was on the verge of exploding. Duke had been quietly observing her for three years, not making any attempts to hasten events. Gloria was loyal, understanding, looked at him with devoted eyes, and was easy to talk to. She was a medical school student, facing the challenges of her studies, but her determination and passion for her future profession were paying off. Gloria had become one of the top students in her class, and a bright future was predicted for her. 
One day Duke announced that he had won an internship in Germany. Gloria sincerely congratulated him, but then realized he would be leaving, and for how long was uncertain. What if he decided to stay there? When Duke saw the saddened expression on Gloria's face, he unexpectedly declared, Gloria, marry me. Let's live abroad together. Besides, it's better for me to go there as a married man. Apparently, they're suspicious of singles, so let's get married and go there as a normal couple. What do you say? Gloria was in shock, and it intensified when Duke, feeling like a real man, leaned in and kissed her for the first time in three years. Gloria was overwhelmed with happiness, and for the first time she realized that even her mother, who seemed almost prophetic, could be wrong about her. That's how it is, Mom. There's someone who cares about me, and we're even getting married for love. However, from that day on, Gloria didn't give Duke a moment to breathe. Every day, the newly engaged woman called him, demanding that he officially come to ask for her hand in marriage from her parents, discussing with them the details of the wedding ceremony, including when and how it would take place. Duke was hesitant to talk about it with his parents, who didn't share his intentions of getting married soon. Son, you're not even 25 yet. Why marry so early? Finish your education, work, travel the world. It's not like you joined a sports club and suddenly got a wife his father advised. I've been with her for three years, the young man patiently explained, somewhat uneasy about the prospect of marrying Gloria. But he had already proposed, and there was no turning back without seeming like a scoundrel in her eyes. A day before the wedding, Duke went on a picnic with his friends to celebrate his impending marriage in an all-male gathering. He returned in high spirits, only to be greeted with strange looks from his parents, who had some equally peculiar news. Our future daughter-in-law called. She's quite upset said she won't sleep all night and demanded you call her. Completely bewildered, Duke dialed Gloria's number, aware that the phone was in her room, hoping not to accidentally talk to one of her family members. Gloria picked up the phone and immediately expressed her displeasure. Where have you been? Tomorrow is the registration, and you're wandering around with who knows whom. Why didn't you come for the fitting of the wedding suit? I've been waiting for you all day. Sweetheart, calm down, please. I tried on the suit yesterday, everything was fine, Duke attempted to pacify her. Why didn't you come then, Gloria continued her tirade. I'm not your wife, yet we still need to get married. I'm sitting here waiting for you like a fool, and you're frolicking at the picnic. Probably got drunk out of your mind. Did you manage to make someone happy before the wedding? Confess, did you sleep with someone there? With whom was I supposed to sleep when there were only guys Duke started to get annoyed? Gloria, darling, let's talk in the morning in a calm setting, when you're well rested. I'll come and pick up my beauty Duke tried to ease the situation. Beauty laughter, almost hysterical, echoed through the phone. You've never called me that, not alone or with friends. I guess I've never been truly beautiful for you, and I never will be. Suddenly, she burst into tears. Gloria, sweetheart, don't cry. Forgive me if I offended you, but I genuinely don't understand what's going on right now. Go to hell. There won't be any wedding Gloria slammed the phone down, leaving Duke staring at the device with a puzzled expression. That's quite a number, he whispered. Yet, his inner voice insisted that he needed to call her back. Girls always get nervous before the wedding, but Gloria didn't answer. Tired of dialing her number, Duke turned off the phone. All right, we'll talk tomorrow. It in the morning, there was a real commotion in Duke's house. The groom's friends, all dressed in formal suits, arrived in their best cars accompanied by their elegantly dressed beautiful girlfriends. Duke thought that Gloria was probably ready and gave the command to depart. However, near the house there was silence. Perplexed, 
the groom went to the bride's house. Gloria, today is the registration. Did you forget in response Gloria began to scold Duke even more for yesterday's events. Gloria came out wearing a bathrobe and slippers. Seeing Duke in his formal suit, the girl's face twisted with disdain. Here comes the groom. And where are you heading Gloria? What's going on? We have registration, then a restaurant. Get dressed, we're already here. Get lost, idiots. I changed my mind. I won't go anywhere for anyone. This is just nonsense. You have to be a complete fool to get involved with such an idiot. Gloria turned around, slammed the door loudly, and went back into the house. Duke blushed with anger. He had never been in such situations before, and he hadn't heard anything similar about others. Seeing the guy descending from the porch with an enraged face while dead silence filled the house, Duke's friends exchanged puzzled glances. Getting into the car, the guy tore off his tie and demanded, pour me a drink. Then came an explanation of what had just happened between him and Gloria. The guys looked at each other and someone said, Duke, if fate gave you a chance to escape from this hysterical girl, don't refuse. Let her sit at home and regret losing such a husband. Am I right? Yes. You don't understand, Duke abruptly said. I stated in the application that I'm married. If I show up without a wife, they might refuse me the internship. Germans are very meticulous about this. If he can't take care of his own documents, how can he be trusted with management? Just grab the first person you see and drag them to the registry office. Why the first person? If she's supposed to be a respectable German Frau, she definitely shouldn't be a hysterical one, and preferably not an ugly one. Let's go to our people there'll be someone there suggested Duke, and lacking another option agreed. Among the girls patiently waiting for the groom and bride to arrive, one stood out to Duke of short stature, with tan skin and delicate facial features. She was slightly plump but with beautiful body lines. After hesitating for a moment, Duke approached her. Hello. Can I talk to you for a minute? The stranger looked at him in surprise and nodded. They stepped aside, and Duke feeling nervous, explained what had happened. The girl calmly looked at him. If I understand you correctly, you need a formal status rather than a real wife, right? She asked. That's correct, Duke replied, surprised that he didn't have to spend time on lengthy explanations. I must go there as a married man. Occasionally we'll have to appear at events together as a couple, Whatever you do in your free time is none of my concern. You are free to do as you please. When the internship is over, we can return. And we can annul the marriage. You won't have any obligations to me or my relatives. Interesting proposal, the girl smirked. After thinking for a moment, she said without any coyness, all right, I agree. Registration today? and you won't bother me or demand marital duties. No, no, Duke said, scared. We just need to live together under one roof for a week before we leave, and then we'll live separately until the end of the internship. No claims from me. Okay, then, the girl said. And so, Duke married Sherry, who had come at the invitation of her friend, the girls reasoned that no one would pay attention to two unfamiliar girls in the crowd of guests at the wedding. Sherry's friend nearly fainted when she heard about the impending marriage. Wow. Are you serious? Is that blonde guy your fiancé? And won't your folks bury me for such news? The wedding ceremony went smoothly. They partied in the restaurant until midnight, and Duke took his young wife to his place. He had a separate apartment inherited from his beloved aunt, his mother's sister, who was childless. Duke was neat and kept the place in exemplary order. Sherry went to the bathroom and, after a shower, settled to sleep in the living room. 
Her parents were shocked when they heard about their daughter's unexpected marriage. If he's an honorable man, he won't do anything wrong to you. But if he tries, he'll regret it very much, the girl's father said. They only had time to say goodbye before their daughter's departure abroad. The spouses behaved naturally, appearing in public. Duke discovered that he enjoyed coming home to a prepared delicious dinner and chatting with her about trivial matters. Gradually, he found himself thinking that he didn't want this life to end. When Duke and Sherry once collided at the bathroom door, he felt like she burned him with her touch. A spark ran through his body, and he had the impulse to hug her tightly, and when he saw how she looked at him during walks, he realized he wanted to be with her, because she was his woman. That evening, he arrived a little later, holding a bouquet of Sherry's favorite freesias and her favorite fruits. They talked for a long time, and after glancing at the clock, Sherry stood up and stretched. It's time to sleep. What do you want for dinner tomorrow? I like everything you cook, the man replied, never taking his eyes off her. Sherry, we've been together for several months now. I feel good when you're around. Tell me, do you like me even a little bit? To be honest. The girl looked into his eyes and said, yes, you're a man of your word, and that's very important to me. And do you like me? Very much Duke replied in a husky voice, slowly getting up from his seat. Maybe it's time to change the status of our relationship, not just on paper but in reality. I promise not to insist. If you're against it, I'll just go to my room and won't bother you. Sherry approached and placed both hands on Duke's chest. She felt his heart pounding wildly and whispered, agreed. It's time for us to move on to a different level of relationship. That was enough for Duke to lose the last remnants of self-control. He gently lifted the girl in his arms and carried her to the bedroom. A few weeks later, upon returning home, to his surprise, Duke saw Gloria at the door. She was neatly dressed and made no resemblance to the furious fury who didn't even let him in before her own wedding. Hello, Gloria greeted mockingly. Hello. How are you, Duke replied, bewildered. Why ask such questions when the answer is obvious Gloria flared up? What do you want from me? You rejected the wedding, insulted me. The thing is, you owe me, Gloria reminded him. Remember when you talked about starting your own business after the internship and I promised to help with money? You got the money, the internship ended, you launched your business, and what about me? No husband, no money. Duke looked at Gloria with surprise, not understanding how he could be foolish enough to make her an offer and take the money. Indeed, how? Sherry's parents demanded that the son-in-law report to them properly upon his return. Their requirement was fulfilled. Everyone was satisfied, especially the mother-in-law. It's clear from the start that they didn't marry my daughter in vain. They look perfect together and get along wonderfully. Duke considered himself lucky, having hit the jackpot in life a smart and beautiful wife, sensible and compassionate. Coming home after work to enjoy the comfort surrounding him brought him immense pleasure. Sometimes Duke wondered how his life would have turned out if he had married Gloria after all. However, recalling her hysterics and stories of scandals between her parents, he realized he was fortunate that she backed out of the wedding at the last moment. They would have probably divorced ten times by now. She turned out to be too loud and suspicious. Sherry never made hasty decisions and was surprised herself that she accepted the proposal from a guy she first saw an hour before the wedding. Duke's behavior, keeping his word like a knight and not bothering her while they lived together, impressed her. She decided it was time to turn the formal marriage into an official one, especially to spare her parents the intricacies of her marriage. I remember everything, Gloria the man calmly replied and suggested, let's meet by the bank tomorrow after lunch. 
Bring me the document. I'll invite a notary, and we'll settle this matter. Agreed. Gloria narrowed her eyes and looked at her ex-fiancé with an unfriendly gaze. Then she gestured toward the apartment door and mockingly asked, So how is she? Better than me. In what way? She's a normal girl, Duke replied. See you tomorrow. Duke closed the door in front of the girl and sighed. I'm glad you refused to marry me back then. Sweetheart, what happened? Sherry's voice came. Nothing special, wrong door. The next day, Gloria arrived at the appointed time. She raised her eyebrows mockingly at the sight of Duke and an unfamiliar middle-aged man, unmistakably a lawyer by appearance, walking beside him. Gloria, remind me of the amount in the document Duke asked after a brief greeting. The girl silently showed him the paper. Duke nodded and entered the bank building. In 15 minutes, he came out with a small paper bag and said, let's go to a secluded spot so we don't attract attention on the street with such sums. They entered a cafe and settled in a private booth, asking the waitress not to disturb them for the next 10 minutes. Gloria, Recount Duke said. His voice lacked any hint of previous intimacy, only a dry official tone and impersonal politeness. The girl, with a grim expression, counted the money in front of the men and said, Everything is correct, it's the amount stated in the receipt. Then put your signature, acknowledging that you received the money and have no claims against me, Duke pointed at the document. Gloria lifted her head with a malicious smirk and asked, What about your commitment to marry me? You refuse that yourself. Besides, the receipt says nothing about marital relations, so don't talk nonsense, Duke retorted firmly. With tears in her eyes, Gloria packed the envelope into her bag and headed towards the exit. Goodbye, Duke called after her. He held the receipt in his hands and said with relief, I suggest we have a small lunch to celebrate this day. What do you think? The notary gladly agreed. Why not? It's the perfect time to recharge. Gloria walked down the street without looking around. For some reason, she felt that Duke would be greedy and just for the money and to avoid giving anything back to her, would immediately seek a divorce. Where did he find this sherry, she wondered. Duke returned home elated. He decided to share his story with his wife to avoid misunderstandings and secrets that could negatively impact their cherished relationship. When Duke finished his story, Sherry smiled. You're a master at getting into unusual situations. Since you're in such a mood that nothing can faze you, I think I'll do it right now. What will you do, her husband asked, looking at her with concern. In response, Sherry whispered, I'll congratulate you and myself. We're going to have a baby. Duke jumped up as if stung. He looked at his laughing wife and gently touched her still flat belly with his large hands. Really? Are we going to be parents? Sherry was pleased with how he took her words. We'll be parents it signaled that he was ready to share equally in all the responsibilities of caring for the child, not complaining about lost sleep. That evening, the couple talked for a long time, imagining what their little one would be like. Duke openly wished for a daughter. She'll be an amazing little girl. They say intelligence is passed down through the maternal line, so I'm sure she'll be as smart as her mom. What if it's a boy, Sherry playfully asked, watching her husband's dreamy expression. Nothing to worry about. Let it be a boy, your intelligence is all I need. Meanwhile, Gloria sat with her friends, who openly expressed sympathy for the failed wedding. Yeah, Duke was a jerk, one of them said. How could he easily give up on you and immediately marry someone else? Believe me, when guys say they're willing to move mountains for their loved ones, it's just talk. Gloria could only nod silently, though deep down she knew she was to blame for it all. 
Thank you all for listening. Subscribe to my channel. I would appreciate a like under the video. Until the next meeting.